Greetings all and welcome back to Blended Miniatures. I am your humble DM, Tim. And today, something a little bit different. I've actually been tinkering around with the, the Hero Forge uh, page, as you can see here. Uh, and because I've been running the Expedition to the Barrier Peaks uh, campaign from uh, Goodman Games, one of the things that I noticed is a few unique... Uh, encounter types that I couldn't really find miniatures for anywhere through my various searches through uh, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for the the workshop page for tabletop simulator but uh, I've actually been working on how to create those unique encounters in uh, in the using the uh, the hero forge system now I've already done a lot of these already, but I thought it'd be interesting just to go back and show everyone how I did it. So just a quick one to begin with. So you can see all my miniatures here. So uh, probably one of the simplest ones here, the doppelganger. Now this is how, how he ended up looking. And the doppelganger being a very bizarre looking uh, humanoid figure, but relatively simple so if you want to create your own doppelganger all you need to do is create a new miniature uh, now for the head it doesn't really matter what species you go with just pick anything really but the head you want this mouthless one because the picture of the doppelganger and I'll put the picture up there so people can see it it doesn't have a mouth but it does have eyes so it have any other features so let's just remove the hair uh, the eyebrows, uh, leave the eyes, leave the teeth in. Yep, cool, so we're done with all that. Clothing, uh, of course, doppelgangers don't wear clothes, so we're just going to delete the clothes completely off it. Uh, but for body type, you want this one here, the gaunt torso. And then for the legs, I went for the damaged... So you can go like emaciated leg, but there's another one here. Where was it? Spovine legs. Damaged legs. So you get that weird, interesting looking little vein thing happening there. Uh, then really it's all in the measurements. You just want uh, you want it really tall because they're very, very tall creatures. You want the arms, as, uh, hang on. And then you want everything small as possible. Uh, posture straight, you want the build incredibly thin, the arm length is the real kink, you want that as long as possible, you want that all done, you want that down, you want the waist, actually no, you don't want that, you want it kind of shapeless. Uh, da -da -da. Get rid of all the curves, get rid of that booty because they don't have a booty. Alright, and then realistically it just comes down to colouring, and I just went with that one there just the basic subterranean the dark elf coloring uh the eyes though oh i forgot to remove the eyebrows F silly me get rid of those uh because doppelgangers have like those weird glassy eyes until they assume a form uh in the colorization usually what i try and do is find i think it was the bone color if i remember correctly there you go oh it still has ears foolish me get rid of those ears silly me there we go and then for the pose just your basic like that and that's how you create yourself a basic doppelganger in hero forge nothing particularly special but there it is um Next one I wanted to show off was the uh, the basic Android build, really. Uh, so the way that I did the basic Android build, uh, here are some of the Androids as I finished them off. This is like a this is a bare bones Android, just for your generic female Android, and there's the uh, same same deal, basic male Android. Uh, really very 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 simple all you need to do to create these is you take the species type hang on so same deal you take your your basic head 
You remove the ears, you remove the hair, you remove the eyebrows, you keep the eyes. Um, take the clothes, you remove the clothes, and then you take the uh, body type and you change that to a robotic torso. Uh, you take the legs and do the exact same thing uh, to robotic legs. And that's literally how you do just a, a, a bare basic bones android with, uh, there we go. So whatever color type you want to go for, let's just do that one there. Um, but what I did with the eyes, though, because they are robotic and just to give them something a bit more uh, unique is you take... Uh, the aqua blue eyes that glow so it really stands out and then for the the pose for the no hang on for the facial expressions just put everything to zero so they've got a completely blank expression um but the other trick is because i wanted them to be like looking kind of old and rusty one thing you can do if you have the option uh is using the decal system you can add a splatter and whatnot or the dirt stain but if you hit up here you can change that to be an actual dirt color and then if you scale it up and then reposition it whoop, hang on up and down there you go make sure it wraps all the way around and you can create dirt so that's how you make your basic generic dirty android uh and then realistically, after that, once you've got your, your basic Android set up, you can just do whatever the heck you want with it. Just in changing the, uh, like from male to female, you can change them from, um, yeah. So like I was saying, so once you've got your basic Android set up, all you need to do then is you can just accessorize. So this was the, the doc bot that I created. Um, I gave him the artificial arms to make it look like so he's got less gears he's more uh, sealed up for doing surgery and then his accessories because i didn't have like any surgical tools it's a uh, a drumstick and a glow stick that i've just changed the color to make him look like futuristic surgical tools and you know that he's a doctor because he's wearing the bluish color of scrubs uh same deal with uh the nurse bot the nurse bots same as the doc bot but with a uh, little weird hand scanner thing. Uh, you've then got the the ninja bot or the karate bot, same deal there, just with the different uh, hand wrappings and the pose to represent uh, the artwork better, as you can see. Uh, and there was the boxer bot, gave him a bit more of a build up uh military helmets gloves like i said all all down to colorization built off the same basic chassis and doing this you know gives um makes it look like you know that was it was you know just a x model droid that was available and they just programmed them and accessorized them to do whatever they need to do this is the the fencing training bot and then of course the last but not least the workout bot and i gave him the cocky look because in the uh the book he has uh some very uh cocky lines to say during that part of the campaign but anyway moving on all right so one of the more unique uh entries in the expedition to the barrier peaks is the squealer as you can see uh here this is what i ended up with and there's the picture of what it looks like um Probably one of the more unique creatures in that it actually has three limbs. Unfortunately, uh, the Hero Forge tool set was a little bit restrictive in that I couldn't put the arm coming directly out of the back. And one of the tails, you can't put a hand on the end of it. Oh, dear. So that uh, wasn't an option. But uh, yeah, uh, relatively straightforward to build. So all you need to do is we take uh, a cobalt. Any kobold will do, male or female. Uh, with the head, you, again, you want to remove all of the uh, additional features. So you just want 
the head essentially. Uh, with the body type, um, you go, because you, you need the additional limbs. So you, you go to here, you hit this button down the corner here, which gives you four arms. But what you can do after that is you go to this bit here and you can actually have amputee, amputated limbs. So you just do that one there and it takes off one of the limbs for you. So you don't actually have to have all four. Um, for the measurements in this one, you want everything weight-wise really reduced because this creature is really, really skinny. But you want the arm length to be really long. Uh, so you want the build down, you want the waist down, you want the belly down, curve down, and the booty down. Okay, so that's how you get the, the basic thing. And you also want to remove the tail because it doesn't have a tail. Uh, this thing does not have any clothes, so just remove all of the clothes. Uh, take the, we'll just do a basic colorization on it just to make it more interesting to look at while we're working. All right, uh, now for the pose. So what you wanna do, oh, hang on, I think it's back here, the posture. Yep, so you want that at zero, that's all good. All right, cool. Uh, all right, so you want the, you want him tilting, Oh no, sorry, first things first. We've got to use one of the basics here. You want this one. This is the basic position that you start off with. Um, you could probably do it with this one here as well, but uh, in terms of the actual image of what it originally looked like, you want this one here gives you the yeah, a good basic starting reference point. Uh, then you just got to fiddle around with the advanced settings after that. So we'll get the, uh, this limb from the top here. Uh, let's give it a go. Type claw position. Uh, this limb here, and twist it around, bring it around. Now you put the clavicle way up there to give the arm on top. Trick is though, you've got after that you've done that, you've got to really manipulate the the secondary arm to get it to touch the ground. But it can be done. Just got to be just got to be patient tweaking all the sliders to get it to the right. There we go. Just tilt that up. There we go. And again, you can just pick whatever position you think works well for the different pose. Uh, another trick too, if you want to fill out the, uh, the base more, if you go back to the body, go to measurements, increase the height. This will give you more to work with in terms of the the creature but you don't want it too tall because otherwise it won't uh touch the base and you want it sort of positioned on all four of its limbs but just something to you can mess around with depending on how you wanted to do this uh all right so we got that bit there you just Now I want and let's just there we go. Beautiful. All right, and then we'll just tilt the hand up. There. And do the same with this arm here. because his hand was reaching right out over the edge there, you give him this little clawed bit and it looks like he's crawling his way off the uh, the base. There, I mean, look at that, beautiful. And there you go. Oh, hang on, I forgot his spines. How foolish of me. So that's in extras. There we go. And then on the head, uh, you go to horns 
and give him and there you are and that's how you make yourself now, it's not perfect but it's pretty pretty accurate to the the artwork that you get from the book so that's how you create yourself uh shriekers from the expedition to the barrier peaks and moving on behold the space illithid probably one of the uh, more interesting uh, characters in the Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. This is a uh, a mind flayer that actually got uh, stuck on board the ship, whether he was uh, an exhibit that broke free or uh, stumbled onto the ship after the fact. Um, but the party members can encounter uh, this, this guy who's decked up in all of this uh, stolen equipment. So he's got like a full space suit. He's got grenades. He's got... Uh, one of the um, uh, disruptor pistols. That's what that actually is. It's not a scanner. It's a disruptor pistol, as you can see by the artwork there. Uh, and yeah, this is just one of the uh, the coolest uh, encounters. And I, I was going to use this as a generic Mind Flayer thing, but when I saw that I had the option to do this, uh, I had to, uh, to create a, a unique miniature for this. Now, you're probably wondering, how did I get tentacles? Because there's no options to do tentacles. Well, the trick is they are not actually facial features. They're actually tails that I have clipped through the torso and out through the head in order to create uh, the, uh, the, the, the facial tentacles. Now, I cannot take credit for the concept here. This was actually... Uh, a gentleman uh, by the name of uh, Eric H. Vella on the D&D uh, &D Beyond forums that, ex that actually showed that you can clip the tail through in order to make tentacles. But this one is probably one of the trickiest ones to do. But essentially, create yourself uh, a basic character. So let's start again. Uh, yes, you want human body this time. Uh, this time we're actually going to to dress him up a little bit. So let's just, for example, let's just go with this. Make him look at all very cool. Uh, for the head, however, the one that I chose for it was the elongated alien face because I felt that it had the most uh, common features in relation to uh, the basic mind flare look. Uh, you want to remove the the head of course, or the helmet of course, because and of course the hair. Even though having an incredibly sexy <laughs> mind flare with a, an, a a fabulous mane would look absolutely phenomenal. Uh, yes, yeah, let's get rid of all those bits and pieces. All right, cool. Uh, and the ears, of course, because they don't have ears. All right, so then. Uh, let's just give him some color. And... All right. Then all you need to do is take the body type, go to tail, go a straight tail, but add four of them. All right, so you've got yourself four tails. Then, this is the trickiest part, all right? set up your pose however you want it to be so let's just say we want a basic pose like this uh, let's get make it look very very angry and also get rid of the twinkle in his eyes because he is a evil soulless creature there we go and then in the pose section with the advanced you take this bit here and just maximize all of the twist functions one at a time until eventually it should all right should get to that bit there then start bending it all right and eventually it'll clip through the body now this isn't going to work with every pose position unfortunately so let's keep twisting it prepare to fast forward preparing to fast forward fast forward fast forwarding sir And 
which have got the tentacles in an okay position. You want to cover up that, so all you need to do there is just give yourself a uh, a mighty cape, and that covers up all of the uh, the bits that you don't need. And there you go. The only drawback is that you've got to make sure you have the body position correct before you have before you start working on the tentacles, because once you start uh, moving everything else, the tails reset back down. So always do your tentacles last if you're trying to recreate one of these things. Um, and of course, if you need to get the head to like match up with these tentacles a bit better, so there you go. Look at that. On very nasty looking squid person, not illithid, because they are protected by copyright, I believe. But uh, yeah. There you have it, ready to maybe eat brains of people. We don't really know what uh, squid people do. I'm guessing... <laughs> Hang on a second. I have an idea. All right, give me a second here. He has... There we go, Fry. We're ready to perform surgery. <laughs> uh, so there you have it. So that's how you do uh, tentacle faces uh, with uh, with this system. You can create your very own Zoidberg with a backpack or a medical kit if uh, you so desire. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's really all that I wanted to to show off for this one. As you can see here, I've been having a lot of fun creating all different sorts of uh, monsters for the uh, Expedition to the Barrier Peaks game. So we've got uh, many varied versions of uh, the robots. This one here is probably one of my favorites as well. This is a very a basic setup, though. It's a... Uh, a skeleton in exo armor. Nothing really to say about this one here. Just got to uh, take a basic skeleton and you replace the arms in the body section with the clawed robotic arms to give it more bits and pieces. And then everything else is just done with paint, essentially. So you just add these shoulder pads on, this little chest piece, because it looks like an exo bit there. These pants are the closest thing I could find sandals for strapping them in unfortunately they have these nice bows on the back but you don't need to worry about that and yeah you just got to uh mess around with the paints to show which parts are actually the exoskeleton which part for the original person that died inside of it but uh yeah thank you all very much for watching please remember to like and subscribe i have been your humble dm tim and be sure to come back for the next episode of blended miniatures and until then remember to keep on blending.